This presentation is brought to you by the Microsoft Virtual Academy. Welcome to part two of the System Center Configuration Manager 2012 Application Management. In this session, we will build on the part one of the application management topic and talk about global conditions and global expressions, as well as what we've added since the early betas through enhanced detection methods, app uninstall, a new topic called supersedence, as well as additional features and partners we have been working with to develop the application model. So let's talk about global conditions for a minute. This is a foundation of our requirement rules. And when we talk about applications having global conditions, um, one of the main elements of that is the requirements that allow us to determine what is the appropriate deployment type to deliver to a targeted system or user. Properties of users and or devices that make delivering software appropriate make up the requirement rules. These are conditions that are system artifacts. They can be default global conditions where things like a memory setting is detected or queried. Or they can be custom settings where a machine's corporate device, uh, registry key value, uh, primary machine, etc. The global conditions are made up of a several tiered system of rules that we verify when an application installation is commenced. There are requirement rules, the global condition, and then supported by a system attribute. So the requirement rule is a yes-no. Do we pass or, or fail on a, a validation of a check? Uh, in this example, we're looking for something called a corporate device value, if that's true. Uh, we know the condition that is met is that this is a managed corporate asset. And the attributes we're looking for in this particular case is a registry key value that we're querying that would be typically bit placed by IT in the registry from a corporate asset build. In addition to global conditions, we have something called global expressions. Global expressions enable the application author or admin to create logical groupings of conditions and assign values to these. These can then be reused for other applications or to help assist to create uh, relationships between applications. So here's an example of a, co a collection of global expressions. An expression such as the corporate primary device may consist of a collection of settings. Memory like one gigabyte, free disk space meaning at minimum 500 megabyte, the OS being Win 7, Primary device, based on user data, is a value of true. And the corporate device value that we're looking for in the previous slide, the registry key value, is also set to true. So this collection of, global, uh, of, of a global expression condition could be made up of multiple values that we would query. Some are based on system values. Some are lower than that in things like the registry. A comment about our beta 2 additions for software distribution. We've uh, enhanced our detection methods. We've created application uninstallation support. Uh, as well as something that's very important to the IT departments of today called supersedence. Let's talk about enhanced detection methods for a moment. Enhanced detection methods are an ability for the administrator to provide a more granular control around looking at the presence or absence of an application. This means we are looking for file, Windows installer, or Windows installer registry providers to understand if an application is truly present. The file value could be file folder properties, whether they exist or not, versionings, date timestamps, or additional data around the directory structure. From a Windows installer repository perspective, we'll be looking for things like MSI codes, products, version information, etc. And then at the registry level, we're looking for keys to be existing or not, the entire hives, the values of those keys inside the hives, and a comparison of registry values across different versions of applications. These are complex expressions and can contain multiple values to be built and, grouping, uh, and grouped into a logical uh, collection of expression settings. This allows us to be far more granular as we get into things like application versions and the concept of supersedence will build on top of this. So let's talk for a moment about the application life cycle. The application life cycle is a concept that IT goes through, even though it may not be formally defined by their processes, an application is effectively passed through a series of stages in its life. It is new, it is uh, either developed or released. Uh, the application may be updated or, or superseded by a newer version. Uh, we would retire the application, we'd move it off and move it into uh, you know, a decommissioned state or unsupported state, and the application will be removed from production and even from the assets it was deployed against. Uh, this concept of an application being deployed, patched, updated, removed, retired, and deleted is a typical process that an application will go through by an IT organization. Uh, and we have to account for that with capability inside the product. So let's talk about a new feature called application uninstallation. Um, this was introduced at the beta 2 level of Config Manager 2012 um, and, is, and is a core capability to our application lifecycle management fu functionality. 
Uninstallation is now supported in the application model, uh, and this is a consistent, reliable, and predictable experience across different deployment types and technologies that are used from the application model to present an application to a machine. Those could be, but are not limited to, Windows Installer, XE Scripts, App V, or other. This uninstallation process ensures that state-based app deployments include removal and completely cleansing of software in addition to the installation routines. The complete promise of state-based software distribution, according to the administrator's intent, is realized by providing the additional features around uninstallation services. In order to achieve uninstallation feature set, not every application will be dealt with the same way. Some applications that are more complex or based on third-party technology or even built in-house will often have their own routines or set of commands to be run in order for the application to be removed. As a result, the traditional Windows installer add and remove program list uninstall command may not necessarily be the only way or the, the primary way an application needs to be removed. As a result, we define ourselves around uninstallation services around admin administrators creating an uninstallation deployment uh, that is actually an action to remove the application. The app model defines the uninstall method for each deployment type. Uh, for the MSI deployment type, for example, a supported uninstall command could be calling MSI exec with the slash x and the setup MSI to begin the process of removing a particular application. And that's just one example. The admin defines a specific collection to target the uninstall deployment against, and this was typically uh, a mirror of the application originally being targeted. Uh, so we would mirror the initial deployment. And if a user or device is the recipient of both the uninstall and the uninstall, the install wins and the app will not be removed. So part of this is an administrative process that in ensures that the installation or deployment of the application is retired in order for the uninstall to be successful. Next, let's talk about something called application supersedence. This is probably one of the biggest asks by our early adopter customers in order for them to truly manage application lifecycle uh, with respect to certain applications going through uh, revisions. Uh, the definition of supersedence, the ability for the administrator to create a relationship and declare one application is a newer version than another previous application version. This ultimately results in the newer application replacing the older application for a user on a system that's been targeted. And why is this important? Well, this was uh, data we, we captured from our customer experiences, but to summarize it, it provides the ability to ensure users have the latest version, and the IT organization is only managing the most current or the minimal set of versions required in order for the business to remain productive through that service. The overall goals of adding supersedence were, were fairly straightforward. Um, we wanted to utilize uh, this concept across software updates, a Windows update, uh, that has been similarly applied there. Typically in the past, uh, a uh, uh, Windows Update KV article would, would supersede another article. Uh, so we have this state detection capability already built in. Uh, we just had to bring this forward into Config Manager 2012 from an application management perspective. Uh, this allows admins to test or pilot newer applications uh, prior to production release. And this allows us to ensure that um, before that newer version is rolled out, we can test. Uh, this is an overall goal for us. We had to ensure that process could be built into the actual framework. Uh, of, of allowing the administrator to roll out a structured and stable application experience. Um, there are other goals here, provide the ability to uninstall or upgrade a previous version. So we may have some situations where applications build on each other, um, where there might be prereqs of the original application version uh, that are built on with the newer version. Uh, this again comes back to my point about the application uh, being quite independent of the other applications on the machine. And it really does come down to the originator, originator of the application, whether it be a third party, an internal line of business app, or a major vendor. Some design details of supersedence, uh, it's a relationship that is defined at both an application level and a deployment type level. Uh, this allows us to both define the application as having superseded version or being superseding of other versions, uh, and then also how that affects the different deployment types that potentially may have different uninstallation or removal per, uh, characteristics associated to them. The administrator first defines the relationship to an application level. So at the global application object level, the supersedence is defined. And then secondly, they map deployment types to both of those application formats and those versions um, inside of the application's properties. Both upgrade and installation of superseded applications are applied against here. So we are ensuring that the most current version of the application will remain. And we have a capability built in called Relationship Manager that shows supersedence relationships in a visual aspect in the console. So with respect to the end user experience, supersedence is designed to be as seamless as possible. The user only sees the latest application version in the software catalog, which is our web-based experience, that, um, the, the browser-based experience of the software catalog. 
Uh, and the required application are always the enterprise's latest version. This will ensure that a user doesn't have a choice to make, uh, which could inevitably be the wrong choice, uh, and only the most current or superseded version of the application is available to them uh, for download and installation. Only available applications installed uh, by the user can be automatically updated, so we have to ensure that the application uh, commenced its application experience with Config Manager. Uh, we don't have an ability to reach outside of the Managed Configuration Manager experience uh, and do this type of work for um, unmanaged or non-deployed applications. So here's a simple example. We have two applications, uh, Adobe Reader versions 8 and versions 9. Uh, Adobe 9 is the superseding version over Adobe 8. Um, but both applications are deployed to the same device. Uh, so if the client has Adobe Reader 8 already installed, and, and assuming, of course, that Adobe Reader 9's requisites are, are met, um, the 8 version will be replaced with the 9 version. Uh, this would be either an uninstallation or an update to that, to that level of, uh, of, of Reader client. If the client has Adobe Reader 9 already installed, the application model will evaluate both the 8 and 9 detection methods. And if 9 is present, 8 is not, but since 9 supersedes, it doesn't try to install the version 8. And if neither are installed on the machine, Adobe Reader 9 will only be the one that's installed based on it being the most current registered version. So let's talk about managing conflicts and supersedence. And obviously this can create a situation where an administrator um, you know, begins to try and manage too many versions or doesn't have the right detection methods or the applications don't build on each other like they potentially could uh, in a perfect world. Um, the account, let, let's talk about an accounting application that had dependencies or relationships to other versions of Adobe. Um, this potentially could be a situation in case one where the client receives all policy no apps have been previously installed, and assuming the requirements for the deployment types are met, 9 will be installed. Um, the application, the accounting application, is not installed on the client, and the conflict requirements are not met, uh, and a message will appear for the user and the administrator to be responsive with. In the situation that's number two here on this slide, the accounting application will, um, policy will be received prior to supersedence, and the relationship is then inherently defined as having a tie to Adobe 8. Uh, in this particular case, uh, the Reader 8 will be installed, assuming the requirements are met, of course. We have to ensure those are still there. And when Reader 9 is deployed, a conflict for Reader 9 will be provided to the user and the administrator, allowing a choice to be made. So let's talk about application management and the retiring of an application. This is a, a typical point in the life cycle where an application will become decommissioned. Typically, it will be superseded or moved off of support. Uh, and the retiring of the application when it's decommissioned is a process that now Configuration Manager has built into the console. We can now select an application and retire the application as, a, as an action by the administrator. Um, existing deployments that are out there will continue to work, but no new deployments can be created for that application. An application can be reactivated. It can technically come out of retirement, so to speak, um, and be, re be reactivated and redeployed uh, to targeted user groups or collections of users. Revision history. Um, we can view the revision history of an application object. We can see when things like retirement happened. We can delete revisions, view additional revisions, uh, and revert back to previous versions if we need to. Applications and all of their content dependencies can also be exported and imported. This was a major feature add based on early adoption experience that allows organizations to move application packages uh, in the app model from either maybe a lab or pilot into things like a production environment. Personally, here in the System Center team, we have used this heavily as we move between our demonstration environments, uh, and it is really that seamless. So we've talked here about some of the new features we've introduced through the beta cycles. We've talked about supersedence and some of the, the fabric that that creates around application lifecycle management. And some of the key things we want to summarize are that applica the application model is an extremely powerful way uh, to manage the application lifecycle. From the initial deployment and creation through updating, uh, through versioning control into retirement and removal, the app model now provides a complete life cycle uh, for managing your applications. One thing to quickly remind people about is that package programs, the concept we've had since SMS days uh, and has been consistently available through Config Manager 07, is still there and available to people. So as uh, they do exist and are possible, uh, the application model is uh, different and is potentially uh, a path for applications to migrate towards or away from the, pr the package program model. An administrator can still target devices. Um, that is still possible. Systems can be targeted. And there are scenarios where some applications will be targeted to systems. Uh, but we've provided enhanced functionality to, to really provide a platform that allows an administrator to think about the user. And deploying applications to users is truly embracing the, the trend of consumerization of IT. 
Thanks very much for your time. This was brought to you by the Microsoft Virtual Academy.